Peace and welcome to another Uncanny Review, where we waste no time and we get right to the point. Today's episode is all about the best Nintendo 64 controllers. Before we begin, I do want to clarify that I paid for each of these controllers, and I was not paid for this review in any way. What follows is my unbiased opinion. In today's video, we will be taking a look at the Hori Mini, the Tribute 64, the Brawler 64, the RB864, the Hyperkin Admiral, and even an original, an original with a third-party replacement analog, and one with the GameCube analog. First up is our honorable mention, the RB864. It's one of the best third-party controllers that emulates the style of the original. It supports Bluetooth and works with the Nintendo Switch, but you will need an adapter if you want to use it on the original Nintendo 64. So for that reason, it's in our honorable mention spot. If it was compatible, it would have made it into the top five. The analog registered every time on every move. My drifts on Mario Kart were successful and I could do Link's spin attack. Not bad. There were rumors about this controller having a dead spot, but that is not true. That rumor began as a result of people using the controllers on Windows and not configuring any options. Oh no, I'm too young to have a second childhood. In at number 6, we have an OEM controller with a third-party replacement analog. And that analog just happens to be very similar to one that you can find on the GameCube controller. It's not perfect, I had some input issues while playing Mario Kart and attempting to drift, but it would read the inputs if I slowed them down a little bit. For other style of games, it works better. I would say it comes down to what style of game you like to play. I don't need to talk about the build of the controller because it's all official besides just the analog. It's the original case with an original cable. I went with an OEM controller that has a third party analog over the Hyperkin Captain because it's the same thing, but Hyperkin does not have official parts. If you mod an OEM controller, everything besides the analog will be a genuine Nintendo product. Number 5 would be version 2 of the Brawler 64. I must stress the fact to avoid the first model of this controller. There is a problem where the analog stick would catch on the L button. After the initial controller started to ship, we received reports of the L trigger button coming into contact with the analog stick when the analog stick is pushed into the upper left position and depressing the L trigger. Unfortunately, this was something we did not catch before production began. The team at Retrofighters takes this seriously and we will be providing this retrofit kit, shown here, for all Kickstarter backers who would like them at no charge. Since the initial shipment of controllers shipped to backers, Retrofighters has also announced another iteration of transparent colored shells. Please note those controllers will not require any modification as the design team incorporated all the necessary changes and redesigns from the original Brawler 64 into that controller. But this has been fixed in newer models, so look for Brawler 2.0. One way to guarantee a new model is to get a transparent controller. These are a later model and have addressed the issue. This is a very reliable controller and for a decent price. The build is good on the controller as well as the analog itself. It doesn't have the Z trigger on the back, instead you have two triggers which would be the L2 and R2 positions. And both of them are Z triggers. This controller suffers a little bit when it comes to the analog. It's similar to the GameCube analog that we mentioned earlier, but this one is far more reliable. As far as the controller itself, the build is fine. I don't find the case to be cheap, and the cable length is 10 feet long. And that's another way to tell the Model 1 apart from the Model 2. The first Brawler 64 had a cable length of about 3 feet, so this one is much improved. 
The D-pad on this controller is perhaps the best D-pad I have found on any Nintendo 64 controller. So if you plan on using it more than the analog, this might be the controller for you. Number four is an authentic Nintendo 64 controller. As long as the analog is good, because some of these controllers are starting to get up there in age and have been put through a lot of wear and tear. And we all know how these analogs tend to loosen. Sometimes to the point, they just flop around. You can pick up a replacement analog on eBay or Amazon for really cheap, and they do have a similar feel. The third party replacement that I received is very similar to the original, but considering the original analog is 20 years old and still performs well, I would give it the edge. I am curious to how this replacement one will hold up over the long haul. Six months of use is drastically different than a few decades. So I will come back in 20 years and let you know how it holds up. <laughs> Number three, the Hyperkin Admiral. A Bluetooth controller, so there is no need to talk about cable length, but it also comes with an adapter that allows you to use this on your actual Nintendo 64 console. For that reason, I already like it. The analog on this controller is very tight. Some analog sticks bounce around when you let go. Some bounce so much that it might even register an input. The D-pad is on par with the Brawler 64. This and that one I would say are the two best D-pads I have felt on a Nintendo 64 controller. The Z buttons are a good size, so if you have bigger than average size hands, this might be the controller for you. You will notice there is no memory card slot on the controller, but you can find that on the adapter. Another cool feature is the micro SD slot. I also must mention, the notches around the analog don't do anything. The analog doesn't touch the sides. So, it's just for looks I guess? Or maybe my controller has a defect? If you care about that, then you might want to pass on this one. Everybody stay alert! Number two, RetroBits Tribute 64. So we basically have a bootleg Hori Mini. The design is nearly identical. The controller itself is about 5% bigger. The D-pad is slightly bigger and the start button too. The start button is also plastic instead of rubber. The analog and all of the buttons on the face are pretty much the same. And you will find the triggers are bigger and shaped differently. This controller gets a few points taken off because it's basically a Hori Mini with a few tweaks. But the controller itself is decent. It's not a bad build, it's sturdy, and it doesn't cost too much. One thing it does have better than the Hori Mini is the fact the cable on this controller measures 10 feet. You don't have to sit right in front of the TV. Number one, the best controller, in my opinion, is the Hori Mini. It's best for longevity, accuracy, reliability, and has one of the better analogs. I don't have to slow down my inputs like with some other controllers. I can go full speed and it registers. I like it a lot. The analog is thick and it doesn't flop around at all. The controller itself is a little bit small when compared with an original, you can see it's about two-thirds of the size. The D-pad definitely reflects the size of the controller, just look at the comparison. A lot like the Brawler 64 and the Tribute 64, there are two triggers which both act as the Z button. The cost is a little bit high, but it's worth it. If you want to save a little money, then maybe go with the Tribute 64. But after all is said and done, the Hori Mini is my favorite Nintendo 64 controller. The build is what one can expect from Hori. It's very sturdy and one of the toughest on our list today. The cable measures in at six feet. It's not the 10 foot cable of the Brawler 2.0 
or the Tribute 64, but it is good enough to get the job done. So there you have our favorite Nintendo 64 controllers. The top two controllers are nearly identical. One is just slightly bigger, and one is the original. Anyways, shout out to Gold Level patrons Bearsona, Quantum X, Chris Hayes, and Dimitri. We definitely appreciate it. I am ICC. Thanks for watching. Peace.